Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to take a little walk about through the Oak Savannah Project area and kind of assess what needs to be done this winter. I have some basil bark spray. Well, I actually don't have it. I have the ingredients. It's tricopler uh, basil bark dye, which is a, a really powerful red dye so that you can see where you've done it. Uh, methylated seed oil, blah, blah, blah. And what you do is you spray a six inch diameter or less tree with it uh, from the ground up 15 inches and it will kill the tree. I was thinking of doing that in this area here, but looking at it, I don't know if I really need to. I mean, I can do the same thing with sawing. I can saw these little trees down, stack them up and burn them and then use that same treatment on the stump instead of going 15 inches up and all the way around. I think I'll use way less material doing it after they're cut. But let's take a look and see what needs to be done here. Number one, I need to clear a path through this stuff. I got to cut this whole thing down, this big tangle of brambles and stuff. Cut that whole thing down because that's going to be planted with prairie grass. Still not sure what variety, but there's going to be a, a small road coming in and connecting down into here. So one of the early things will be to cut that down. These stumps here, and they're everywhere, these are from cutting last year. And what these are going to do, most of these are going to re-sprout this spring, but I can spray those with that same basil bark treatment and kill them off before they start re-sprouting. That's a big problem when you're clearing woods, is re-sprouting hardwoods. One of the things that needs to happen this spring is this fence line here. Kind of hard to see because it's way overgrown. Here's a post right here. This needs to be cleared and it's super overgrown. I'm not sure if I, yeah, it something has to be done early in the year so that this is visible. Either I have to come in here and spray this with something like crossbow, which is 2,4-D and tricopler, I believe. Spray this all these brambles with crossbow and so that I can still see the fence line throughout the year. Yeah, something's got to be done, and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to handle it. I believe that is the way to do it though. Looking at this fence in uh, harsh daylight, it's just, it's really not worth saving. We were going to put a horse fence and connect it to this, but it's, you know, it's really overgrown and it'll take so much work early in spring and I have like zero time early in spring. We're going to be building that addition to the back of the house this year, so I'm going to be very limited on time because I, I'm going to be planting plants in the greenhouse, clearing trees through here. I just don't have the time for this fence line, so the more I look at it, I think I'll just come in here and spray this with crossbow, kill all the brambles off, maybe do a basil bark spray on a lot of these smaller trees to kill them back. 
and then just put a new fence sign right on the other side of that. Uh, it's not that hard to pound T-posts. I can get a whole fence sign done in a couple hours. Back in here, this is one heck of a mess, but it's really not going to be all that hard to get this real thick area of small trees. I can go right through here with the brush whacker and take most of these down really quick. Yeah, then I can come in with the basil bark spray and spray all the stumps instead of going around with uh, Tordon. Tordon's, you know, $10 a bottle, which isn't too bad, but it has Bacorum in it, which uh, lasts a long time in the environment. The basil bark treatment lasts about two weeks. So, and it, and it doesn't transport through the soil. So it's, it's a much better choice to just cut these and then spray the stumps real quick with the basil bark treatment. Yeah, we have a, a ridge right there. We're going to have the farmer across the way come in and smooth that over this spring. And then there's a little bit more over towards our new neighbor there. And I have a line of trees that I'm planting this spring all along the road. We have, oh, is it 10 or is it a dozen? We have a bunch of bare root bur oak coming in the spring, so I need to get those in the ground too. Yeah, this doesn't seem like much right now, but this entire area here is brambles. This is all blackberry and a little bit of gooseberry. This is real hard to deal with once it starts sprouting in the spring. So I will have to get in here. And like I said, I, I'm thinking about using crossbow on all of this bramble stuff throughout the entire fence line area, like right back here and along the fence line. Knock all this stuff down and then I can deal with the trees at my leisure. I can, uh, I can girdle these or I can do the basil bark spray and kill them back, but they pretty much all need to go. This field at some point will be connected from the upper part down to here. So I'll have to get in here and smooth this area off a little bit because that's been fenced in field so long, there is an elevation distance right here that should be smoothed out a little bit. I walked this a little bit earlier and had my cat with me the entire time. She's recuperated from her illness. She had a really high fever, so she had to have some strong antibiotics that last 14, 17 days, I forget what it is. Um, so we've kept her in until today, which is five days. And she's doing really good now. This is about the extents of where I think I can get this year with my clearing. I saw this this right here is dipped in quite a bit and I don't know what's causing that if it's an old tire track but there's only one of them which would mean more likely a deer track but there's there's a print right there but if it was a deer trail there would be a lot more prints going through here not sure what it is I know there used to be a road going up into the field, but now I'm thinking it was much further up there, probably on the neighbor's land. If 
but besides going along the fence all the way down to the end of our property and killing the brambles I will have to get in here and do something with especially this thicket of trees in here I think I can basil bark treat them which is just coming in and spraying them but like I said this area right here you all of a sudden you get into these giant aspens so I don't want to deal with these this year there's just no time so I'll probably get in here and girdle them and look at how dense they are they're all right on top of each other and they're very big if you girdle these things they uh, they rot real quick these will all you know they'll just fall down after a couple of years which may be the way to do it it's a lot easier to deal with old rotten wood than this heavy fresh wood and that's some big chunks it would take me forever to deal with that it's possible I can find somebody who wants this but I don't know I doubt it about the only person that would want this would be probably a pulp mill I mean we could burn this as firewood it's actually not that bad if you don't need a hot fire uh, because aspen doesn't burn that hot and we have such an insulated house that burning oak gets it too hot in there so aspen actually is a good firewood for us but just this one tree would probably last us three or four years and we would have to build a place to store it so what we do is we basically just use trees that have fallen across the road and that's plenty for firewood for us see this right and through here is all gooseberry I hate this stuff it's just a mess and hard to deal with so yeah this right here as well this is a gooseberry right here nasty plants So there's kind of a natural edge right here. It almost seems like there was a road here, but I don't think so. Well, possibly. You can see that the trees are all really small coming through here, and then there's bigger ones on both sides. Kind of looks like a road, but uh, we'll see in the spring. So I don't think I'll come much further than this girdle these big ones and cut these small ones I don't think I'll be able to seed this area this year but I already have some fairly good sized areas I have about 10 pounds of seed which I believe Roundstone recommends for an acre it's either eight or ten pounds per acre so I want to get a good acre cleared and get it seeded and then I can work on this on at my leisure while I work on the addition on the house big old grapevine right here circling up and around yeah a lot of this stuff here is dead this is rotten yeah not much good stuff in here this is a a pretty crappy area of the woods I would call it the worst Yeah, look at the size of that grapevine right there. So we're coming up now on the area where I left off last year. This was a big bramble patch, really big bramble patch. And I got in here and brushwhacked this 
right towards the end of the year. This area might be able to be planted this spring. I'm not sure. I know for, for sure I need to spray this whole area with crossbow to knock back the brambles. Other than that, I don't know if it'll be ready yet or not. I'll have to see what it looks like once everything starts greening up. You can see the big rock ledge in here. I really want to get it cleared, this whole area right in front of the rock ledge. And then those dead trees right above it. There's the Bigfoot tree right there. I want to get this all cleared out this coming year, but again, the addition is going to take a lot of time, so we'll see what can be done, you know, between that and the day job. I only have so much time, and I got to work on the tractors and just tons of stuff to do. And I would like to get this whole area cleared out as well. So, yeah, got a big job. This is the road that I cleared last year, the Billy Road. It only took a few days, I guess. I have to look back at the videos. I know I got most of the way down. Oh, geez, I, I think I did most of the road in, in one day and this down here. She is an insane cat. She will jump between trees too. She's already followed next to me, jumping tree to tree. What you gonna do, cat? Oh, you're gonna do that. Come on. some massive tangles in here this stuff's pretty hard to get rid of because you know it's got trees growing in the middle of it and old rotten wood but hopefully I can get that cleared out when I took my little walk earlier the last I seen of my cat was right in here somewhere she's out hunting oh, look at that cat You know, it's pretty cold out here. It's about 17 degrees. We've had, oh, right around 10, 9, 10 degrees, but 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. So it's just been really nasty up until today. Right now, like I said, it's probably 17 degrees, but there's no wind, so it's not really that bad. Yeah, this is all the stuff I cut from the road and the last of the clearing I did right behind the house that's all sitting right there so I could do a nice sized burn pretty much any time I want as long as it's not buried in snow I could probably get back in here you know tomorrow or later on in the week and yank some of this stuff. The problem is it gets frozen to the ground. Whether it's covered in snow or not, the ends of it will all be frozen to the ground. So it's, it's really hard to move and get it all piled up. So I might have to wait until spring to burn a lot of this. Yeah, giant job. But it's something to do. It's, 
I already have the seed, so it will, I'll have to get in here and do the planting of this whole area and the two other areas that I cleared and then all along the road and this area. So without a doubt, I got to get these last trees out of this area right here. Then I'll have a nice continuous area to plant right here. Then whatever else gets done, gets done as I work my way through the summer. Yeah, it should be fun. A lot of hard work because it's on the side of a hill, but it should be fun. So if you want to see all that stuff happen, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then click on the update icon so you receive notice when we post new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.